Hachamim say, when Hashem wants to make very strong one country, the angel go more higher, more higher, more higher, yes? Like the empire from Greek empire, Roman empire, right. Babylon empire, Assyria empire, yes? Right. Empire. All this empire. When, when Hashem wants to make him fell down, he first throw the angel, after this country come down. Hashem showed the Yehudim, I throw the angel from Israel, don't worry more about the Misraim. And uh, Misraim running behind the Yehudim, and Hashem closed the water. But we have something very special. How, how, this, uh, how this water open? Hachamim say it's open in 12 portions. Every Shebet go in, in one portion. Between one portion and other portion have like crystal, crystal from water. Make like ice, ice crystal. And in the top have like chupa. And walking like king, no walking like somebody scared. Okay. To walking with all the the the, the zekenim and the child, that that take time. And if somebody is thirsty, he put his cup and the crystal. He have sweet water. The sea is not water. This sea is not sweet. So, so. that is salty. Have sweet water. And also pasuk say baharaba. He walking and dry and the dry. The land is dry, not like when if, sand if, or yes, or yes. if you sand. and one if you and one pool, uh, if you and one dry pool, dry sand. Sand. Yes. sand or sand. but hard sand. Mm -hmm. right. If you if you and one pool have sand in the bottom, okay, you take out the water that is no hard no hard sand that go to be mud, 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 yeah. Mud. But here mm. is that that is, okay. Hakamim, Hakamim say has ten miracle in this. Has ten miracle, miracle. miracle. Okay, and uh, also each tree, each tribe can see the other, the friend. Oh, oh. Okay, and then after we know we have Shira, as Yashir Moshe, Ubnei Israel, the Shira is not Moshe. Moshe, Moshe say one pasuk, all the people repeat. Moshe, Moshe say next pasuk, all the people repeat. Yes? This shira is something so much important. Hakamim say, when every morning we say the shira in the shahrib, we don't need to run it. We need to say the shira with the ta'amim. We need to, 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 to think I am now walking in the water. And Hashem saved me. Hakamim say, from the shira, we have good parnasa, we have protection. We have Refu Ashelema, have many, many, we have peace of mind, many, many Yanin, if I say the Shira in the right way, and many Hachamim, many Hachamim have Minhad to walk in, in the knees or in the party and say the Shira and thinking like he walking in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the water. Okay, I go to finish quickly to Hacham Dweck uh, say a few words. Uh, now we have to leave time for questions. <laughs> you and questions. <laughs> 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 And the same perasha, and the same perasha, we have. Okay, we have in the same perasha. The people is hungry. Hashem bring the man. The people is thirsty. Hashem show him one pit. That means Hashem show Moshe Rabbeinu one stone. He tell him take your steak. They keep up, silk, silk, silk. Okay. Steak. Steak is what they want. That's what they want. They want the steak. They want the steak. They gave him a steak. They give them a steak. Pasuk, pasuk, pasuk say, They keep up a sela. Somebody know Hebrew. Peter Wahoo. Need to say they keep up et a sela. No, they keep up a sela. I go to, you go to head and 
inside the rack. Right? Rashi brings Midrash say the, the stick from Moshe is not stick from wood. It's stick made from sapphire. It's one uh, jewelry. Yes, one, one stone. No? What, only one stone. Hashem, Hashem how say he created this stone special to be the stick from Moshe Rabbeinu. And we know, we know who can who can broken the stone. Only the the diamond and, and the jewelry can broken the stone. When Moshe Rabbeinu when Moshe Rabbeinu hit the stone, the stone, the stick come inside and open. Cracked it. Split it in two. Yes. Why? Hamim say Hashem no want the people thinking uh, Moshe no one place when hiding water. No, the water is from the stone coming. Because Hashem opened the stone and from the stone coming the, the water. Now, we see we have these three items very important go with Am Israel for the four years. He need the cloud, he need the food, is the man, and he need the water. Achamim say the the cloud coming for the whole Aaron Akoy. What is the connection between Aaron Akoen and the cloud? We know the Aaron Akoen is a special misva to do shalom. We see two persons have fight, father and son, brother, uh, husband and wife, and, 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 and women. Every he he have the chokma to make him do shalom. We know when have shalom between the Yehudim, the light of Hashem coming, cover the people because this the Zehut Aaron coming, the cloud cover us for what the Zehut what he do. Moshe Rabbeinu is the chief of the Nebi'im, chief of the all the prophet. He teach Am Israel Torah. And Torah also, Torah named the Torah Lechem. Lechu lachamu belachmi. Go eat my bread, my bread is Torah. Like Moshe Rabbeinu teach him Torah, for the Chut Moshe we have the bread. You need to understand this man is not regular bread, but is very special food, is food from angel. And no need to go to the bedroom. Nobody go to the bedroom. And the and the and the bear hamayim, the pit from the water. This pit from the water walk with Am Israel for four years. That is for the hut Miriam. That is for the three brother. Why Miriam have the hut to the water came for the hut Miriam? When the mother Moshe put in the basket, Moshe Miriam for many hours. Uh, stand, stand that, stand eyes there, and watch, and watch him. And 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 midrash say in the water. Rabbeinu Saad Yagaon say, the water is not something to Miriam. Miriam not do not sacrifice. The water is there. He can stay up in the grace or in the afar. But he stay up in the water. What what is the connection? He say we know understand good the midrash. What that mean the water? Miriam crying so much, he have water behind his leg, around his leg. That for the hood, this water, Hashem sent the, the water from, from her tears. I go to finish one pasuk very nice, Hashem saying this perasha. Say, all the sickness I put in Mizraim, no I go to put the new, because I, Hashem, go to heal you. The question is very easy. If you say no, no, any, any, any sickness no go to hell, why do you need to say go to, 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 to heal you? Correct. Good question. Yes. Because this is a good question. It's time to Okay. Okay. Hachamim say have a have few answers. One answer is it. When somebody go in the way Hashem, yes, he had the refuah before to have the sickness. Many times can be big sadiq, but Hashem want to test this sadiq. Or many times they are on the door, but Minan can come in sickness. But Pasuk tell me, 
en perashat mishpatim, verapó y rapé, mi canche es rechut la rofé le rapot. We have permission to go to the rofé, because we can say, if Hashem sends something, he go to take it. Why I need to go to the rofé? Hashem, no. We know angel, you can go to the rofé. But now Hashem tell you, you know, Ani Hashem, the rofé no go to heal you. I heal you. The rofé is only one middle. I heal you. Because these hachamim say, everybody, somebody, bar minna, need to go to the rofé, need to talk with Hashem. Hashem, I know you are the rofé. And put sedaka and say, please Hashem, put and demand the mind of the rofé what, what I needed. You know, many times somebody go to the big professor, don't do nothing. <laughs> and small doctor, he tell him what is the problem. Hashem sent the chokmah. Be'azrat Hashem sent Hashem sent refuah shelema. Amen. 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 I don't want to be too long because I'm uh, here already for a while. But just to say something in honor of me, I'll say a quick Dvat Torah. I just want seven years ago, exactly this time of year, is when we had a class in this house here, and I invited me to introduce me to all his friends in Eaton Town. So if you're Baruch Hashem now, it's the seventh anniversary for one of the class that I have here in the house. Bezat Hashem, like Maya brought me Baruch Hashem, big Baracha. So Hashem should give him and his wife Baracha, Mishwa, all the good things, and that Hashem only says, Amen. 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 Just a quick Dvar Torah I want to share with you. There's a comment. I've been working the last, uh, for a while. People ask me question about Ayn Hara. What does Ayn Hara mean? And, and the way, who says there's such a concept in the Torah? So just real quick, I want to share with you from the research that I did on the topic. Uh, the Ayn Hara means that when a person is jealous of somebody else, <coughs> That jealousy, the, the envy, the lama magia lo veli en, the why does he have and I don't have, those thoughts and those, uh, and when you say that, and uh, even if you don't say it, even just by looking, that is called ayin hara, it's a bad eye. In Shohanuch it says that just like there's a concept that a sur lexolom, you can't steal from your friend, and one of the ways of stealing is to take a hammer and break his window, that the Shohanuch says the same way you cannot do damage to your friend's Property with your eye. Even though it's the Yesh Gozel, the Gozel, the Halakha says. So a person steals and doesn't realize that he's stealing because it's not with his hands, it's with his eyes. For an example, in Shulchan Aruch it says, Asur lo la Adam. It's based on the Gemara, the Sechet Dama Metziah, and other places. It's forbidden for a person to stand next to his friend's field when the crops are high up. Or let's say you have an orchard and full of apples and grapes and things. Asur. Asur to stand in your friend's field when he has all the barakah. Why? Because what are you going to say? Wow, look how the field grew so nicely. How come? And in there, even if it's your friend's, it may be a tinge of jealousy. So therefore, Shohan this is not just superstition. It's a law in Shohan Aruch. Halakha le ma'aseh. The Mizmaran in Shohan Aruch was posek this way. And it's a Gemara. And it's the same thing applies today. For example, you have a friend that has a warehouse. You shouldn't bring your friend to a warehouse and, and, uh, and show him, let's say, a guy who's successful, big warehouse, machines, a thing. If, you, if, a, per if a person knows that he may have even 1% of jealousy, don't go. Wow. Why? Because guess him. It's stealing. Wow. Now, it's not only financially, it's in everything. And I want to give you a few examples from the Torah. The Torah says that when Hagar was pregnant, it says in the Torah that she had, she became pregnant again. So, like, so Rashi said, what's going on? She had a miscarriage. How come she had a miscarriage? Because it's hard for us to say, but Torah says, Sarai Menu, she wasn't pregnant. Her maid marries her husband, becomes pregnant right away. Sarah has Ain Hara, Hagar had a miscarriage. Wow. This is in the, in the Torah, Pefirush. That Sarah, Hagar, with the, the Pirush of Rashid, it's clearly in the Pasuk. I'll give you a, another example. Hagar didn't like Ishmael. So when he, she told Abraham, send him out of the house, Sarah, the past, Sarah didn't like Ishmael. So she told Abraham, get him out of the house. Abraham didn't want, it's my son, da da da. In the end, what happens? Pasuk says she, he, uh, they kicked Abraham had no choice, kicked him out of the house, and says that she carried Pasuk says she carried him on the shoulder. What's carrying him on the shoulders? And she said he became so sick. He became so sick. Ishmael became so sick that she had to carry him, and he got a disease that he became light like a three-year-old, even though he was, he was in his uh, 27 or however old he was, he became so light like a three-year-old, she was able to carry him on the, on the shoulder. Why? Now I want to tell you something. Just two weeks ago, my wife was telling me 
Emet, you know I'm not making up stories. Emet, I'm going to tell you now, Emet. There's a certain woman that I tell my wife, don't bring her to the house. Because I know every time she comes, I know she, she tells me, how come your children are so beautiful? Wow. I, I, I start to sweat. <laughs> how come your thing is so... And I, 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 as soon as she starts with that kind of talk, right. and yeah. I'm, I start to sweat. I'm telling you, for real. I'm, I'm, and I'm telling you now, Emet. Now... She came, finally, she told my wife, I want to come to you for Shabbat. You know, Baruch Hashem, we can have people over. I wasn't happy about it. All right, Shalom, this and that. Okay, she wants to come, she wants to come. She comes, I'm telling you, ask Dr. Sultan. Three of my children, one with stitches, one with this, one with that. Two weeks ago, the same woman, the same woman, two weeks ago, tells my wife, you know, this lady, she became pregnant. Ha! She became pregnant. How could she handle it? How could she this? How could she that? Rabbi, I promise you, I'm telling you, Emet, next day miscarriage. Wow. I'm telling you, I'm not lying to you, I'm telling you, Emet. Certain people, they're burning with this jealousy. Rabbi, $2,000. Burning, burning, burning with jealousy. And they cause, now, everybody has maybe a little bit of it, but some people are very extreme. They're born with an extra dose of jealousy. Kina, Sina, Taharut. And this we see in the Torah is very dangerous. Just to give you another example, Le'ah, the wife of Yaakov, Pasuk says, uh, she had, um, Pasuk says, she said, after she had Yehuda, she said, Pa'amodet Adonai, Ta'amod Miledet. So the Torah says, she said, thank you Hashem, I had my fourth child. She had no more children, and she had to wait till she prayed again for more children. So what happened? She said, thank you Hashem for giving me children, because she had four. Yehuda was the number four. Yaakov, I mean, who had four wives. Each one was supposed to have three, because he knew he was supposed to have 12 tribes. Each one was supposed to have three. Yeah. Now that she has four, thank you, she gave me more than I was supposed to have. Right. Now, when she pointed out that she has more than the norm, Ainara oh. came, Tamod Miledet. That's it, stop becoming pregnant. She should, have kept quiet. she should have kept quiet. Don't point out. Yeah, you could cause it to yourself. You cause it to yourself too. Don't point out the extra. Attract the issue. Extract, attract the issue. Now, when something is normal, everything is norm, you don't have to worry as much. Uh, something out of the ordinary, or there's somebody that's very jealous, you have to be very, very careful. Now, of course, you can't drive yourself crazy with this, but at least if you know somebody who's very jealous, don't st stay away from them or don't tell them your success stories. Don't tell them about the business deals you're about to make. If you know this person, especially when you have uh, a person who is not as successful, for an example. Just give you another example in the Torah, we see the same thing. It says, Yosef had the dreams. What does the Pasuk say in the Torah? Ve'igarbo aviv. Yaakov is angry at Yosef. Why are you saying these dreams? Hamaloch timno chaleinu, you're going to be the king, he made fun of him. What does the Pasuk say? Ve'ikanubo ehav. His brothers were jealous of him. The Midrash says, had Yosef not said to his brothers that, I, that he had the dreams, he wouldn't have had to wait 13 years to become the king of Egypt. He would have become much sooner. But because he told his brothers, they became jealous. He's showing off. Showing off. He had to wait 13 years, became a slave, and the whole story. Because he told them, don't, why are you tell your brothers for? Why you tell? They were jealous. They were burning with jealousy. It low came, profile. Low profile. So Hashem it came, would have found other way to get into Egypt. Exactly. But it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have taken so long. Simple way. It wouldn't have taken so long. The Ainara was because of that. Another example, very important example, Yaakov Avinu in Egypt, it says in the Torah that there was a hunger. Hunger in Eretz Canaan. And every, no, no more food. So Yaakov Avinu told his children, Lama, remember Pasuk, Lama Titrao. What does Lama Titrao mean? So that she says, Why are you going to show Bnei Esav, Bnei Ishmael, that we have food? And they don't have food, they're going to be jealous. Mm -hmm. Especially time of hunger, everybody's watching, how come he has this food, how come I have food? Go down to Egypt with everybody else, make believe you're buying, just not to bring jealousy, uh, even though you have food. Yeah. Make believe you don't, so not to cause the jealousy. The same thing is also, we find that um, when Yaakov Avinu sent his children to Egypt, the Shabbatim we know are very strong, very handsome, good looking. Don't walk in from the same gate. Everybody, wow, wow, look at these 12 guys. Yeah. Each one from a different gate. And that's why Yosef accused them of being spies. They went because they didn't want uh, jealousy. But, but uh, Yosef said, ah, oh, how can you all went different to him? Because he's a spy. Yes. But that's the story. Why did he tell him each one go from a different one? He says, didn't want Ainara. Another amazing, amazing, amazing one which I cannot leave out is the Luhot. This week's parasha. In the parasha this week, the, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu brought the Luhot down. What happened? 40 days later, he took the Luhot and smashed them to pieces. The second Luhot lasted forever. Why? Because the first one, when it was given, lightning, thunder, hulala, shamu amim, all the nations heard about it. And there was a lot of jealousy. The goyim were very jealous. 
the Malachim were very jealous. The Luchot got broken. Wow. The second Luchot, low profile, nobody saw, Moshe Rabbeinu brought it down, back door, nobody saw it, it lasted forever. So you see once again, there was a Gemara, a story in the Gemara, that one of the great rabbis, Bishamon ben Gamliel, he had a son, brilliant, and they wanted to put him on a stage, they were so impressed, they wanted to put him on a stage, and to give him the kavod, because he knew so much Torah, but little seven kid, seven, I forgot the story exactly, the age, seven years old, he started to scream, Pereda, I have to have one beautiful child, you want to take him away from me? Grab them away, don't you dare put him on the stage like that, give him that kind of kavod. So the idea is we have to be very careful not to do, uh, not to do things which cause other things. Uh, now what can we do to protect ourselves from the uh, human nature? Human nature, yes. But, but, but don't do things which are poking in other people's eyes. There's one thing that... Insta it's don't instigate it, exactly. To be low-key is exactly the point. That's, the, that's, that's number one. Number one, to be very low-key. But uh, also, the Syrians have a tradition that we say in Halab that we say, Ben Purat Yosef. Yeah, this is a Syrian tradition, and also in Baghdad, I, you know, I Ben Ishai brings it too. So, if you ever want to mention to somebody, you want to tell somebody, Oh, you have a beautiful child, and you, you're afraid, maybe, let me be honest, maybe inside me I have 1% of uh, jealousy. Maybe out of 100, it's point. Uh, that you're not aware of. You're not aware of, even in the back of my brain, it's a little bit. And, and, but you want to mention, Oh, what a beautiful house. But you don't have to know Ainara. You always preface it with Ben Purat, you say Ben Purat Ali Ayn, there should be no Ayn Ara, that's why. Maybe say, oh, what a beautiful child, Ben Purat Yosef. The Syrian uh, in Arabic, they say that, yes. Ben Ara is a prayer. In fact, I want to mention, it's, it's more powerful, but in the Zohar it says, if you ever um, talk about the praises of your friend, you have to make sure that you don't put Ayn Ara, you pray. So, Bli Ayn Ara is okay, Tefillah. Please, no Ayn Ara. It's a prayer, to, to break it. <laughs> also, another thing I want to mention that, that protects from Aynara is the Hamse. Hamse is something which is mentioned in, the, in the many places in the Torah that the people make fun of it, but it's a real thing. The Hamse is a protection. When you go like this to somebody, it's uh, putting the Aynara back on him. Not only that, you're blocking. You're blo a, you're blocking it, and B, you're throwing it back. It, does, it has two powers. Uh, where do we see that in the Torah, that uh, Hamse is a protection? Number one, we see Yaakov Avinu, when uh, Esav asked him, Wow, me, Ele, and Yeladim, and Hashim, who are all these women, the children? He's, what did Yaakov Avinu answer? That's one place. Another place we find in the Torah is that the Kohanim, there was a great rabbi in Halab, his name was Hamid Haq al -Fiyar. maybe it's Damascus. Hamid Haq al wrote a book, Siyah Yitzhak, and he writes that the Kohanim go like this when Dubikat Kohanim, why like this? Because he has five holes. For the Hamse, I'm giving you Barakha, but the Hamse should protect you. Hamid Haq al says it's Hidush. Ham Abraham Dayan from Halab also says something similar. He says that if you notice Yaakov Avinu when he sent the gifts to Esav, what did he say? He said in the list, he said, I'll, I'll give you, he told him, I'll give you, uh, right, he said, he said, ox, donkey, flock, servants, maidservants, list of five. Why is he five? And he sent him the five gifts to protect from the Ayn Aras. So you see the Hamza has a very... Right, we're saying, oof, it's so hot over here. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you don't want to show them that you suspect it. Also in Halab they had the Minhag when they used to bless the children, they would put one hand on the head. Why? Because Yanni should be protected, even though I'm giving you Barakat, whenever you bless your child, you're afraid, you say you should be Chacham, you should be smart, but there's always a fear if he's too smart, too, too, too rich, too whatever, you'll have the Hamsa, you'll have the Aynara. So therefore you say, Hamsa, Yanni, the Hamsa should protect you, so you put one hand, not two. Amongst Ashkenazim, other communities, they put two. But as far as my research was, in, in what I saw from my uh, grandfather and the, and the Hamtawili, he told me also that one hand for the Hamsa to protect from the Aynara. Also, the blue. Also, the blue. So the Zohar said, Hamitzhak al Hamitzhak al says, listen to this, something amazing will uh, blow you away. Hamitzhak al also fish, because fish is like Yosef. Ben Parat Yosef, Ben Parat Yosef, eye and the eye. The eye is, the fish doesn't close the eye. The fish doesn't close the eye, so Kishmar will protect you from Ayn Ara. But also, I want to tell you that Hamitzhak al writes, the reason why the Jewish people have the Minhag to have a blue, put on the children blue stones, he says, Zohar HaKadosh says, Beferush, the blue color is protection of Ayn Ara. Why? 
Because if you look in the Torah, it says Beferush that by the Mishkan, when they built the Mishkan, it says they put Klil Bli Tchelet. Why they put Tchelet? Because the Mishkan was so beautiful, it's a protection from Ayn Ara for Tchelet. Only it also, kids. Huh? Only kids? Yes, so you're right. That's a minha. You can put it for adults too. But especially children, people are afraid for Aina. You know, once a guy gets older, he becomes ugly already. Hello. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you guys. His ass. I'm killing it. But a child that has. Uh, that's right. Yeah, both. The blue and the hamza. Beautiful. Wow, double way. So, so the blue, <laughs> he says... I don't know about the Baba. 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 So, um... Also, you see in the Torah, it says, uh, Why t'chelet? Protection from Ayn Hara, he says also. And so that's why the children, they put the blue on the children to protect the children from the Ayn Hara. And the hand also, he also says he brings from the Hida, that he used to put a letter He from silver. It's also, so you have two things, either a hand or the letter He is also protection from Ayn Hara. I'm sorry, Joe, what are you I didn't see, I didn't see uh, the code for that, but maybe I'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 and it's a tzit chelet so for the protection. Red Why is it a red string? Red string is another That's concept. From, uh, it's not connected to this. Yeah. But that that um, is not in Syria. They didn't have the red string, as far as my research. They had more the blue and the hand. The red string comes more from the, if anything, the, if anything the Ashkenaz from Israel by Kevin Ahel, They want to say because red is uh, well of uh, like sin, and this uh, fights off the other one, the whole uh, thing like that. But the Syrians weren't into the red string so much. More into blue yeah. and more into the head. What were you saying? I'm sorry? Saying, uh, these, these, these are yeah. objects that have some kind of power. Right. Well, how come to fend off the Ayn And yet there is still no concern about being the Abu Dazara or intermediate or something like that. There's no concern with anything like this? I'm sorry. Um, it's interesting. They talk about it. They say that even though the Rambam usually was very against these types of things, by Ayn Rai, Rambam. Rambam. He didn't believe in superstition. Rambam. Rambam, Rambam yeah. But, uh, yeah. The, the Rambam. Maimon. Maimon. Moshe Maimon. In this case of Ayn Ra, he brings it down. The only difference is that he doesn't bring it as halakha. He argues with everybody else. He holds me that hasidut, not halakha. But everybody else, Mishohan Aruch, Yosef Karo rule, it's halakha. But he held his Hasidut because he wasn't into superstition, he wasn't into Shadim and these kind of things. But he's saying yes. there's no cross wire with Abu Dazara, that this stone has a certain power oh, to protect. We're bringing intermediaries. So, so I'll answer you. So I, let me try a different way to answer you. The Rahim HaKadosh says, how come a curse, why are we concerned, somebody curses somebody else? Who, who are you? What do I care? Like, uh, like, Milan. We didn't know what was happening. Right. So the question is, no, so the question is, so the question is, what are you scared about somebody else? Why would we katarat kelalot? Why we katarat once a year? Why are we afraid of somebody else's curse? And why does the Torah say it's forbidden to curse another Jew? What do you care? Let him curse. Who is he? He has power. What power does he have? He has power. He has power. He has power. What's the power? So, you know, so, so the, the way Rahim HaKadosh explains it, he says that, listen, a lot of times a person is protected, there's no, nothing coming against him, nothing coming after him. But what happens is, when this guy comes along and curses him, so his words create something, and now in Shemaim they start to say, hey, let's, see, let's open his books. So the Ayn Ara works the same way as a curse. Just like you understand when one person curses another person the opening the books, or maybe this guy deserves a curse. Should he be protected from the curse? Should he not be protected? He becomes like a prosecuting. So the soul, Lashon Ara works the same way. Lashon Ara does harm to the person they spoke about. Why? They Opening up the books. This guy is a bag. He becomes a prosecutor. It's the same concept with Ayn Ara. Because the guy is jealous and saying to himself, why does he have that? So in Shamayim they start to say, yeah, maybe he's right. Maybe why does he have that? So it, it works in the same level as a curse, as a Ayn Ara. They all work the same way. I think that makes sense. It makes sense, but now you have a mother caring for their child, a newborn yeah. child, yeah. and make sure I put the hamsa on them, and make sure I put the hand on them, everything. Why is this not a, something not, I don't see Abu Dazar, I'll go for it, but it's something, you understand? Why isn't it something? When you have something, a father do it, it's not Abu Dazar. Uh, no, that, no, that's a halakha. 
You have something our father do it. You know from father, father, father. Yeah. So I want to, uh, to add to what the rabbi is saying. Also, just like you understand, if I see somebody coming with a hammer and about to break a window by midnight, right? Do you say, who is he, Abba Dazara? You don't say that. So the same way you understand when somebody comes with a hammer to break a window, get this guy away. Right. The same way when a person comes with his ayin ara, right. you have to look at this guy with ayin ara like a guy with a hammer. The point is keep low. Point is keep low. Point is to keep low and to stay out. On, 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 on the other hand, it's the opposite of that. It's all, the whole point is, you know, don't show up. Don't show off and then, and, and uh, also one more thing. Rabbi, what's one showing more? off? So if you, if you want to drive a nice car or something, I mean, you're not doing it just to show it to people. I mean, if you have the option to drive a car, you don't have to So I'll tell you, Rabbi Yaakov Hillel, let me answer what he says. Let me answer what he says. Rabbi Yaakov Hillel says, some people, they go so crazy with this Ainara, that more than the Ayn Ara could do damage, their fears could be more damage, more damage. So he says, so he says, he says like this. He says, don't rub it into people. So don't overdo it, obviously. He says, of course, Ayn Ara, he says, I agree, Ayn Ara has power, God forbid, could do, do harm. But at the same time, I'm telling you, there's Hashem. He could protect you from, them, from anything. And just like you understand that, like Mr. Nati Sharim says, that when a person's not sure, some people are afraid to get into a car, maybe they'll get into an accident. What do you tell the guys that? Come on, Hashem will protect you. So at what point do you say Hashem will protect you? At what point do you say, no, don't get into a car? The answer is, Mishra Tisharim clearly spells it out very clearly. He says, you got at everything that you're doing, you have to look at the percentages of what are the chances I'm going to get hurt. If you drive into a car, most people, they get into a car, Baruch Hashem, come back alive, then you're not allowed to say, I'm not going to get into a car because lack of bitachon in Hashem. You're not believing in the course of, of Hashem putting you in the world and living a normal life. But if, let's say, God forbid a certain thing, getting into a rocket for I don't know the statistics and numbers, but I'm just saying an example. Let's say getting into a rocket, 60% of the people don't come back alive, then don't go, don't go there, because you're putting yourself into a danger, and you're putting it in Shamayim, they're opening up the books. The same thing with Ainara. If you know there's a person that's next to you that's very jealous, A, and B, you're going to show them something which is out of the ordinary, then don't do it. If what you have is normal, and the person next to you is happy for you, then just live your happy life. So all, you have to know what you're doing, A, and B, who the people around you. You have to the point, A? Right so if, it, if they get to write... But you don't know who's around. Oh, one, one, one thing Maya is saying, Pele U.S. was a great Sephardic rabbi. His name was a Papo, he was a rabbi of Bosnia. He said,